Landlords, it's finally over. After months of waiting and furious arguing, the Renters Reform Bill has finally passed through the House of Commons. But some of the changes that have been made in the process have caused some serious upset. Yesterday I was invited onto LBC to discuss this with Nick Ferrari and there were some furious opinions being aired. But as I'm both a landlord and a tenant, I can see both sides of this story. So in this video, I'll try to give you the most balanced view possible on what this reform actually is, what's happened and how the government has managed to upset pretty much everyone in the process. Plus, at the end, I'll give you my personal opinion on the situation and an insider's view of what's likely to happen next, which you won't see reported in the press. So first, what the heck is the Renters Reform Bill? Well, it all started about five years ago when the Conservative Party made a manifesto commitment to end no-fault evictions. They wanted to give renters more rights and more security and address the imbalance of power between tenants and landlords. A year ago, they finally did something with this commitment and brought the Renters Reform Bill before the House of Commons, which included the pledge to remove no-fault evictions, but also a grab bag of other measures intended to reform the rental sector. There's a whole load of stuff in there, including that landlords now won't be able to unreasonably refuse pets. There's going to be a new redress service that all landlords have to sign up to, and a new national database of all landlords. Under the new system, all tenancies will be open-ended from the start. They'll run indefinitely, and rent increases during that tenancy could only be made once a year with tenants having the ability to challenge them and take them to a tribunal. And then of course, there's the big one, no more no-fault evictions. So why is this so important and why does it have everyone up in arms? Well, at the moment, landlords have two ways of asking a tenant to leave a property. One is that the tenant has done something wrong, such as not paying the rent. And if the landlord can prove this in court, then the court will give them an eviction order. The other is the section 21 or so-called no fault route, where at the end of a fixed term, the landlord can give a tenant notice to leave for no reason at all. They don't have to give any justification, they just want their property back. The reason landlords are so upset about losing the no fault route is that much of the time they use it when the tenant has in fact done something wrong, like not pay the rent, but proving it and taking it to court would take too long. So saying no fault is just a quicker way to get their property back and get some income coming in again. So getting rid of it gives tenants more security, but it also makes it more difficult for landlords to remove tenants who aren't paying or are otherwise causing trouble. This is such a hot button issue that MPs proposed 301 different amendments to the bill. And when it was eventually voted through this week, it had three big landlord friendly changes. The first change is that tenants must now stay for a minimum of six months. As the bill was originally drafted, tenants could move in and immediately give two months notice on day one. But now, even though tenants won't have an end date and they can run on for any length of time, there will always be this six month minimum. The second change is specific to student tenancies, where it's normal for a new set of students to move in every September. But if the landlord can't be sure of having the property back by then, because the previous tenancy has no end date, that becomes impossible. So an exemption has been agreed for student properties where landlords are able to give two months notice over the summer to make sure the property is available for September again. And then there's the big one. No fault evictions will end, but not immediately. It will only come into effect when the Lord Chancellor has assessed the court system and believes that it is ready. That's because when there's no more no fault and all landlords will have to prove a reason, that will mean far more cases coming to court and the court system can't really cope with the workload it's got now. So what does this delay mean? Well, this has been widely misreported in the press and there's been a lot of confusion, but here's what's going to happen. So, the bill should be signed into law before the end of this year. When that happens, the government will set a date at least six months in the future when the measures within it will come into force. So that takes us to roughly the summer of 2025. So when that day comes, we'll have the new redress scheme, the landlord database and everything else in the bill and all new tenancies created from that day forward will be of the new open-ended type with no no-fault way of ending them. This isn't clear to anyone because the way it's been reported makes it sound like the end of no-fault eviction has been indefinitely delayed for everyone. In fact, that's only true for tenancies that already existed. They will stay exactly as they are until that mysterious future date when the Lord Chancellor decides that the courts are ready. At that point, they will then convert to the new type, they'll become open-ended, and won't be able to be ended without a valid reason. So how does everyone feel about where this law has ended up? Well, not great. Tenants groups are very, very unhappy and have removed their support for the bill because getting rid of no-fault evictions was a manifesto commitment and now there is no date for it at all. But they do seem to have kind of missed that from most likely summer next year, 
all new tenancies will be protected. And landlords? Well, from a landlord perspective, it is positive that Section 21 won't be removed straight away. But here's something else that hasn't really been reported. There's nothing to stop a Labour government coming in and undoing the until the courts are ready bit. So if the Labour Party does win the upcoming general election with a majority, then they have the power to come in and pass legislation that makes Section 21 come to an end straight away. So given that a Labour win looks like the most likely outcome right now, we're probably going to see Section 21 come to a complete end in 2025, whether the courts are ready or not. So I promised you a personal opinion, and here it is. I think everyone is perfectly justified in being upset about how this has turned out. Like I said, this was a manifesto commitment that was made about five years ago. So the government has had plenty of time to sort this out. It was obvious that getting rid of Section 21 would put more pressure on the court system. So they could have been working on it for all this time. From the perspective of a tenant who wants more security, of course you're going to feel let down. But I also think that landlords are within their right to be annoyed about the entire situation around evictions. Because in truth, I don't think most landlords would care about the end of Section 21 at all if they had faith that the courts work properly. As long as you can get your property back within a reasonable space of time, if you want to sell it or move into it or your tenant stops paying rent, who cares what the method is as long as it's quick enough. I was talking to a landlord the other day who just used the no fault route because a tenant had stopped paying rent and it took him 14 months to get his property back. And that is supposedly with the quick and easy way that landlords allegedly just use on a whim. Clearly the courts don't work now with their existing workload. So it seems like it's gonna be madness when they suddenly get a whole lot busier. Last year, a cross party committee told the government to consider setting up a specialist housing court before getting rid of Section 21, but for some reason they haven't showed any interest in that at all. Ultimately, the principle that tenants should feel secure in their home unless they've done something wrong is a perfectly reasonable one. And I've got no problem with tenancies becoming open-ended. The stress of having the annual renewal process is no good for anyone. And in reality, it's extremely rare that landlords are just gonna kick someone out because they think they'll be able to make a little bit of extra money. In my opinion, the bill actually misses some opportunities to be even more tenant-friendly. For example, requiring a longer notice period if the landlord wants to sell the property or move in, because that's not the tenant's fault at all, and two months notice really isn't enough. There's already a six month notice period needed for this in Wales. The delay around the eviction changes, in theory, gives more time for the courts to be sorted out, but judging by recent progress, they probably won't be. And the most likely outcome anyway, is that a Labour government will come in, undo the delay, and it'll all be chaos for a while. So from a landlord point of view, given everything that's happened and where we've ended up, is it even worth investing in property anymore? Well, watch this video next, where we answer that very question.